All right. I'll tell you what, it's getting to a point that I can't, I'm not going to have any room left for people to introduce themselves. But anyway, let's do this. Um, let's get started. There's going to be these, these weird clicks I'm here on my end. So I'm going to try and keep your attention. Uh, I'm in the Hive, which is a, a co-working space over in Shenguan, Hong Kong. And we have the pleasure of Gang, Gang Lu, who is cleverly disguised himself as Technode on, on this call. Um, this is very impromptu, so I really appreciate you, you joining. Um, we, Gang and I have known each other from early days when actually he was a blogger, you know, one of the early guys blogging about the internet in China, which was a bit of a shocker. Um, and now, now he's here with us, which is great. So um, obviously there's a lot going on in our world and we wanted to just have a, 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 you know, a quick chat. The idea, the idea of this call is I'm going to, you know, chat with gang for about, I don't know, half an hour, uh, 45 minutes. If I can do it in between admitting all these people into the room, which is a bit of a distraction. And um, then we'll open the floor to, to questions. Um, I know the nature of this in the media is very political. None of us, neither Gang nor myself, are, are particularly uh, politically trained. So if we could try and, I know it's hard to disentangle both topics, but it'd be really good that the purpose of this is to talk about, you know, what's going on in the kind of technology entrepreneurial world, the investment world, and I guess the kind of behavior of what, how this is being perceived uh, in China. Because uh, as far as I can see, the only people that are talking about this seem to be talking about what, you know, that orange faced gentleman is saying about it, which uh, is only one perspective. So um, let's get started. Gang, thanks for being here. Should I call you doctor? And if, if I should, <laughs> what, what are you a doctor of? Because my uh, God, the, the world needs more doctors. I, I hope so. Uh, well, it's a bit, I, my major is computer science. Um, so I did my PhD in computer science in UK. But what I'm doing now is more like uh, a media guy for four years. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the intro, yeah. Excellent, well, well, thanks for being here. Now, so the, the subject is about, is about TikTok, right? About ByteDance and what's going on. You, you've been covering, you know, writing about the internet in China. I mean, when, I met, when you started TechNode in 2007, but I guess you were writing about it before that, right? So maybe, maybe we can just start with a little bit of a history about where, where these Chinese internet companies, you know, have kind of started and where they're going. Because we all know, obviously, you know, the Tencents, the Alibabas, the et cetera. So maybe just a quick history, just to refresh our minds and, and lay the groundwork would be great. Uh, you mean the history, the, the TikTok? Yeah, just or... with the internet, Chinese internet companies, uh, okay. you know, and they kind of, they kind of quick expansion. You know, we've seen them expand beyond the yeah, China. So maybe just a quick kind of historical yeah. summary. Yeah, well, I think maybe, maybe can, I can start with uh, a little bit of my, kind of my, my history. The reason I started Techno as my personal blog a few years ago, I think one of the major reasons I started because I, I think, I, I thought, you know, one day the Chinese, Chinese tech company will be global. That was 10 years ago. I think that's the, where are we now? It's happening, but I didn't really expect is, you know, when we go global, when China company go global, we're going to face something unexpected. So I think it's like five, if we talk about like China internet, like five years ago, we, we more talk about like a copycats, you know, copy to China model. We talk about like a censorship It's all, everything happened what, inside China. But as you see what happened on TikTok right now, we are talking about Chinese company TikTok, but we're talking about like the global impact. I think yeah, that's a tremendous kind of change, uh, you know, happened in the past probably three or four years. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think it's, actually we've been talking about like globalizations in China for in the past maybe three or four years. We see more and more, we saw more and more Chinese companies and you know, big company like B, you know, BAT, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. We also see some Chinese unicorns, or even some like startups. You know, after B round, C round, uh, in China, they reach out to the global market. Actually, we see more and more examples. But we never see you know, TikTok 
has, uh, you know, you know, has been facing, you know, this type of situation before, uh, you know, even by do Alibaba, I mean, this is kind of bigger or even much bigger than, than TikTok uh, now. Okay, um, well, let's, let's, let's dr uh, drill down into that a bit because obviously, you know, the initial kind of wave of uh, Chinese internets, right, internets, <laughs> the internet companies, Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, even NetEase, I guess the first wave was NetEase and, and those guys, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We saw, let, let's go back, let's unwind it a bit because um, we had Google, we even had um, Rupert Murdoch try and set up an internet business in China and he got kicked out pretty quickly. Uh, but he did take a woman with him who he married. Um, but so we had Rupert Murdoch was kicked out pretty quickly and then Google set up an operation and eBay was there. So eBay was trying to kind of, you know, fight off, fight off Jack Ma. So maybe, you know, at what stage did, because at the time the battle, you know, the battle for kind of territory was all within China, right? Everybody yeah. was trying to claim China. And then, you know, it was the, it was the American primarily, uh, uh, coming in, you know, American tech companies coming into China. Uh, at that stage, what was uh, in China, was there much fear of these companies? Were people quite open-minded and said, yeah, come on in? How did you see that? Um, how did you see that kind of extended subject? You'll see later why I'm asking this question. <laughs> John. Well, I think at the very beginning, is it is. Because I think at the very early stage, internet uh, so we, all, we kind of welcome all the uh, international big, big companies coming to China because not about like tech companies or about like you know investment into China so of course is everything's uh, you know was very welcome but but you know and um, you know what happened afterwards is more complicated some companies still here and they are doing make a lot of money in China and some of the company you know were out of China for you know you know for different reasons uh, especially for those like something to do with the social medias, you know, Facebook, you know, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, all the social media kind of a platform, they all, you know, has uh, kind of brought in China. And, but if you look at the tech companies, uh, Microsoft or some other companies, I think uh, that they, they, they made a lot of money in China. Uh, I, I think the, uh, the business is still, still running in China. Um, you know, Google, the same is, I think, I think the I think the major concern from China side is the search, right? Um, in the content part. Um, so, so I think it's in, in general. I think if if something if the service to do with the consumer, to do with social media, to do is uh, you know to the social media, uh, is uh, the, for in, in China we we are very really careful about that. But if to do with the business, right? You know the technology itself. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, sorry. There's a lady there. Could you could you mute yourself? Um, yeah, sorry. Come come back, gang. We just yeah. had Vicky Vicky trying to she zoom bombed you. How dare you, Vicky? That that's our first zoom bomb. Carry on. Sorry, carry on, gang. Uh, uh, where are we now? Uh, you were talking. Okay, so we're talking about the Chinese. You know, the Americans. So, in my point was initially when the internet kind of took off in China. Uh, Samir, could you mute yourself? Um, when the, the internet first took off in China, we had, uh, you know, the China basically was quite open about allowing these companies in, right? They, they allowed, like you were saying, the, the Microsofts came in. People, the vendors of software were fine. Uh, it was soon as it kind of went into search and social that it became a little bit dodgy. There's somebody who's got their mic on and, and is fiddling with paper. So if, if everybody can mute apart from uh, gang and myself would be great. There is a control here somewhere, but to be honest, I, I, I don't want to spend my time muting you all, if that's possible. Uh, okay, gang, so let's, let's talk now a bit about, I mean, I was there when, when uh, Google was there and had this amazing campus in Beijing where you'd go in and it was like walking into Mountain View, you know, you had people walking their dogs around, which is quite unusual in, in, uh, in China in an office. And you know carrots, uncooked carrots at the end of at the end of the, the table. But Google got pretty quickly couldn't have an operation there. Somebody is is uh, Fiona. Could you mute, please? A bit weird. I don't know how to mute you all. But I'm gonna do what? Yeah. Anyway, gang, go ahead. So let's let's yeah. talk about the expansion. Um, oh my God! Somebody's not muting. Oi! Please mute. 
That should be okay. Mute. All right, guys. So, gang, tell us a bit about how uh, Bite Dance grew and how it, you know where it came from and who who is Jiang Ming? Is he is he um, you know is he? Sorry, I'm going to unmute you now. Okay, you there, gang? Can we hear you? Yeah. Okay, great. So tell us a bit about uh, Jiang Yimin and, and ByteDance and where the company comes from. Yeah, I think the, when, when, when ByteDance started, it uh, started, uh, you know, in China we call Toutiao. Basically, basically you, can, you can take it as a kind of news aggregator. I think, it's, uh, I think that time is really, you know, China is uh, used only, you know, for Chinese users. And also, to my understanding, I wasn't you that much. And uh, you know when they only have the the total uh, at the one of the major uh, products. So basically, there are there are loads of uh, like new aggregator at that times. And um, but I think total was doing a great job because they have, uh, I think they have very good like AI technology in background. So basically, they can smartly or precisely and uh, deliver the right uh, or the interesting news and you know to the to the personnel. So I think, you know, I think the, all of a sudden, I think probably four or five years ago, it started, all of a sudden, like everybody is using Total to read news on mobile. I think mm -hmm. that time, we were talking about like, you know, the global, the globalization of the Total or, or global plan for Total. I think the only thing we talk about is, I think it was very interesting is we always talk about, okay, Total might replace Baidu. And um, for as a search engine or as a news aggregator, or what? The, as a search engine, because because that times I think that's the probably that's a major uh, discussion point is because you know we why by doing so important in China because we use by do for for news on PC, right? But all of a sudden when Total comes up, you know, because we we don't use by do anymore uh, that much on mobile because we always. Up Total to read the news and and, and Total is so smart they have the algorithm behind and so smart always deliver you the the right news and you know at the you know at the first place. So we were talking about okay maybe one day we say okay Total we're going to beat by two. But what what happened is you know all of a sudden it's come it's become kind of global and company. I, I I think the kind of turning point the milestone is like around 10, 2017. Um, you know, actually, there is a company called Musically, which mm. actually also founded by two Chinese guy based in Shanghai. I think that company founded around 2014 or 2015, and when they started, they decided to focus on global market instead of China market because I think they started short video and um, platform around 2014, 2015, probably one of the early the artist platform and has sort of this type of uh, um, a short video uh, format. So around basically, I think that that company was doing, I think, great from 2014 until 2017. I think it used to be, I, at the, as long as I remember, I think, you, the, I think around 2016, they used to be, and Musical.ly was already the number one download in North America, uh, if, I, if I remember right. So, that's become very popular outside China already. But around 2017, Total basically um, acquired Musical.ly at the valuation, at the, I think at the valuation of uh, 1 billion. Um, 1 billion, so, okay, yeah, no, I mean, my 12-year-old uh, my daughter was uh, all over Musical.ly. Hong Kong, there was a mad rash that went across Hong Kong of, of little girls dancing to music on, yeah. on Musical.ly, so I can see so they, but they acquired that quite quietly, right? They acquired musically. What was I the plan the, there? What was the plan to the, go? Because they weren't global before that. They were just totally out in China, right? And a little bit overseas. Yeah, I think I, even I read some, I think, I, think, um, I think around that time, there are some news, but never confirmed, is that some people say, or some media say, actually the, the, the Douyin, you know, the Chinese TikTok, actually yeah. the Douyin kind of copy of uh, Musical.ly. Mm -hmm. um, times. So I think they want to global. Actually, and you know, I think we is uh, we have to you know understand. I think the musically is not the only apps and total acquired uh, around that time. They also acquired some some other. I think there's one called News Public. 
uh, yeah. more, like, yeah, they also use ag aggregator by not for Chinese, right? They also uh, are quite another one, I think called Flipper Gram something. It's also like short video platform. So I think the musically, so I think you, you can see around 2017, you see the ambition from Tokyo, they want to be global. Right, but actually the Musical.ly is a huge success. And you know, I, I talked to the founder, the co-founder of Musical.ly, it's like half joke, I say, oh, one billion. So what, how, how are you gonna do with that money? And the co-founder basically laughing and say, oh, because I, I, the conversation happened last year and then he said that they, 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 they realized that like actually one billion is so cheap, you know, compared with, you know, the valuation, uh, the buy downs uh, is now. So, but, but anyway, I think that's 2017 is really a turning point. Then suddenly, okay, we say, okay, uh, Total or ByteDance is a global company now. Yeah, and so, then, uh, so, so what, what, is the, what has the perception been in, in China? Because China, what I've seen is China likes to hold, you know, the kind of business heroes up. It's a bit like the US, right? Your, your business, business leaders become a bit godlike, you know? Um, in the same way that, that uh, Jack Ma is kind of godlike, uh, what, what Zhang Yimin and the, the kind of idea of going overseas and becoming a big, is how is, has ByteDance and been perceived as like you know, the real, the next kind of generation of China going global? Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, the lots of voice, you know, from different angle. And um, I think it's quite interesting, um, you know, to my understanding, I was, I was, I think I'm, Quite curious because, you know, the majority of the Chinese users they they know those, basically the Chinese part. Yeah. I don't think really that many of Chinese they know TikTok is so popular outside China anyway. I mean, at the kind of a uh, kind of normal. Uh, I suppose they don't. I suppose they don't really care, right? It's too the the just to yeah. confirm the content on Douyin is completely territorially controlled. Like if you're on if you're on TikTok in, in the US. Can you access any of the content on Douyin? Or is there any over, is there any content carried across or are they completely islands to themselves? Probably, I, th I think it's different. No, I, yeah. I didn't I try, but I guess it, it must yeah. be. Yeah, it's not, you're not really the age group, I'm sorry to say, but anyway. Let, <laughs> well, well, that's a good point. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, so, so in terms of that kind of acquisition in the States, so, you're saying that people in China didn't really kind of have the perception that Douyin was going overseas. They just see it as successful within China, right? Yeah, for, for kind of, uh, um, basically the Chinese internet users, uh, the majority, of, I don't think they, they, they care that much. I mean, even it's, well, at least before the kind of a chaos, uh, they, don't, they don't really know TikTok, you know. But yeah. I think the conversation or most kind of discussion is you always, is hard, but is inside our circle, like it kind of internet, you know, like our guys or medias are a lot. Um, and, and also you, you see, even you see, if you read the Chinese news, I guess what I read, of course, the majority of the, 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 the voice is, you know, everybody kind of complain about, you know, Trump, complain about, you know, our, you know uh, the decision from the US government, because everybody, I think the majority think it doesn't make sense. It's, uh, Basically, it's a kind of robbery. And mm. there are also other ways, and a kind of smaller one. And also because um, I, think, I think it started from maybe several months ago. Um, you know, we read some news say, oh, for TikTok, they, they, they want to move headquarters um, you know, from China to outside China. Maybe Hong Kong, then later we see probably London. And I think for users, Chinese users, I think it didn't make sense to them. It's, oh, why? why? Why should kind of compromise and you know yeah. everything to meet the foreign policy? Because it never happened in China. You know, Baidu is so big, Alibaba is so big. We never saw oh Alibaba is going to move headquarters somewhere else outside China. Baidu didn't, and Tencent didn't. But uh, but uh, TikTok is the first one. So I think that there are some. So did they that, actually move their headquarters, or this was just talk? I think I read. I think I read news. Um, I think yesterday. Uh, well, I don't know is uh, is true or not. But basically, it says that there are there are conversation between uh, TikTok with the UK government. I also the news said the UK government already kind of reckoned. They they are welcome. They welcome uh, TikTok uh, the headquarters. But I, I don't know. 
Um, so, but, but anyway, I think there's a different voice here. Um, so, but of course, like, I think the most of the majority, the, the bigger voice here in China is, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is kind of robbery. And, and even, you know, we, we, in Chinese media, we kind of complain, another complain, sorry, commented on, because some always say, oh, and now U.S. is going to ban TikTok. And that that's, is like what happened in China is how China banned Google or how China banned Facebook or Twitter. But there's some like Chinese media also discuss. I think I, I think it's kind of fact is you know actually different. It's a different case. Even you know Google or Facebook or Twitter is not kind of operating in China. But I think I want to point out two points. The first one. Google still have a big office here in China, right? Beijing, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So they are also, they are doing uh, technology, like you know, research. And also they'll make money because so many companies going out of China, they need Google and, you know, need the search engine. And but it's more for outbound, right? They're, they're there to sell yeah, yeah, services yeah, to help almost, Chinese right. companies. They're probably helping Chinese companies like TikTok get, get uh, customers. Yeah. In North yeah. America, right? Yes. So in yeah, a way, he, Trump's kind of screwing himself, screwing his own com companies by uh, yeah. limiting TikTok. Yeah, but, 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 but the point I make is, but anyway, they're still making money. But, but yeah. that's what about. But second part is, if you look at the history or kind of conversation between China, for example, China with Google, um, you know, I'm not a political guy, but for just from what I read or what I, to my understanding is, for China government, they did offer, you know, kind of a kind of basically list of requirements and to Google, and basically, you know, you have to do this, you have to follow the Chinese rule, you have to do this, blah blah blah. So we have list them, but of course the Google and you know in the end, you know, they didn't go for that, right? Didn't follow mm. that kind of. Thing. So that's why I quit. But if you compare with the you know TikTok situation, is it sounds like okay, the U.S. government didn't offer anything. So basically give you, either you become American company, acquired by American company, or you just out. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's quite different. It's, it's like, uh, you know, that's why I think the most people here say it's kind of robbery is, it's, so basically, you know, we don't want discussion. You know, either mm. you become American or you're out. So, so the bit that I don't, the bit that I don't understand is, you know, if uh, this happened to an American company in China, there'd be outrage amongst other internet entrepreneurs and the, the kind of the general, you know, crowd. Is the same thing happening? You know, I don't see the the kind of leaders of other internet companies in China standing up and sort of support each other. How come? Is it just too political? Is that the reason? How come there's not much camaraderie amongst the the, you know, the other internet barons in China trying to support Jiang Yiming and what he's doing. Is, is that just not part of the culture? Is that, how come there's no, you know, let's get together and try to make, you know, make sure that the, the world understands the value that China brings? Um, I think it's, it's um, well, I, I don't know. I think to me, if, if you compare, uh, I don't know, if you compare like TikTok with like the Huawei, you know, yeah. I think the, and to me, I think TikTok series, I think it's probably Huawei is much more complicated and, you know, and then, than TikTok. I think to, to us is, you know, TikTok, TikTok just like consumer based, you know, internet, you know, platform. Yeah, but you could argue that TikTok has, we talked about this earlier, social media, right? So it has, it under, it's kind of across how people are expressing themselves, you know, how they're feeling. Maybe it's a certain generation, but I understand, you know, there's quite a wide group of performance artists, cultural stuff going on. Why is it, why is it, you know, the content there is, is very behavioral, very human, how people are expressing themselves. Now, I know there's yeah. an element, there's an element where Trump's a bit scared because he thinks it's being used to undermine his, his kind of, you know, his followers, but that's, uh, that's one issue. I'm just curious because obviously Huawei is more about the infrastructure. It's about hardware. It's not about soft stuff, right? It's not about people. It's about infrastructure. So, yeah. Well, um, I don't know if the right answer here, but I can give like two, two points. The first point is, you know, I think, you know, if, if we compare to Huawei, I think Huawei is uh, on, you know, at some point, 
is uh, unreplaceable. I think Huawei is a you know, very technology guy, you know, very technology you know, driven companies. If, if, you know, if Huawei is out uh, in the foreign market, is, is I think Huawei probably can maybe, uh, let's put it this way, I think not many companies, maybe fewer companies that can really match the Huawei's technology level. Yeah, from the licenses and the technology, but they just have to pay but, more for uh, it, right? <laughs> Maybe different. I think the tip, if TikTok is out, you can see you know quite a few other, and you know from Facebook you know, as its own, and maybe Instagram is going to launch their own as well. I think quickly, you know the kind of the I don't know from from states or from other you know um, country, they're going to kind of replace TikTok. You yeah, I mean, there's rumors. So there's rumors that Instagram, I mean, Instagram and Facebook, Instagram's got reels. There's lots of people out there. YouTube's looking at it. So I understand that. And I can see that there might be a migration across. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you about was that you, you, because you're involved in the technology world there, for many years, technology was seen as, you know, C to C, right? Copy to China. And the last, you know, three, four years, maybe longer, but kind of in the media anyway, We've seen a lot more going the other way, which is copy from China, right? We've seen, we've seen the, the, the social media companies look at what's happening on WeChat, look at payments, look at all this kind of stuff, copy it across. Do you see um, this happening with ByteDance? What, what have they cracked that is ahead of the game that could, is, makes it not replaceable? For a Chinese company going global? Yeah, well you, just, well, you just said that TikTok was quite easily replaceable, right? You, you yeah, think it's quite, yeah, it's quite easily replaceable compared to Huawei, right? The level of sophistication or technology. I mean, I guess uh, TikTok is using some of the AI technology that they learned from Tokyo, right? The, the yeah. ability to surface stories and all that to you. Is there anything else unique there that makes them stand out that would make it hard for a, a local competitor in the US to kick them out? Well, I think it's maybe, maybe from, you know, uh, I would say if TikTok is out uh, this yeah. time, I'm, I think my worry is, you know, I don't know when we're going to see another Chinese company can match TikTok the level uh, to, has, to have such impact, global uh, kind of uh, internet societies. You know, because you take, take years, I think, is you know we talk about Alibaba is global company as well, but Alibaba is only to do is to do with e-commerce, right? It's all about like money selling. It's easy to understand, and Tencent is global as well, but it's always to do with gaming. You know, WeChat is not that popular um, uh, at all uh, in you know considering the global market. You know, Baidu is rather quite Chinese, I would say. Even they make some investment, but still most of the stuff is Okay, but China. let's just say what you what you just broken down. Tencent, uh, you know, in gaming, in gaming you hang out and you chat, right? Gaming has got a very social element to it. So if, if you were paranoid about what people are saying to each other, gaming is a very social kind of thing. Although from what I've seen in any, any game that I've participated in, most of it is, uh, is you know, I'm going to kill you or beat the shit out of you or something. It's not particularly... Uh, creative in any way but I think um, what's interesting you're saying that the other the other technology you think the other technology companies like Alibaba they're dealing they're addressing things that are not so sensitive to Americans who so they're dealing with in terms of personal data right now I, um, you're saying they're dealing with buying yeah. stuff they're, they're dealing with gaming TikTok dealing with young generation yeah right I think TikTok is changing the mindset for the global young generation which kind of might be kind of scary for maybe for some government yeah. because you know because you see like the trump the you know the, the election uh, the campaign is said that uh, is a kind of affected by the by the TikTok users yeah and tesla yeah yeah so i, I think that's probably that's the most scary part uh, because if something to do you know if only is a you know if gaming is only to do is you know uh, like a virtual goods, you know, to buying or selling virtual goods, uh, or you know, for Alibaba e-commerce is to buying or selling physical goods. I think it's not something to do with mindset, and also it's not something to do with the young generation. But but TikTok is operative, 
right? It's, uh, it's, it's not about like, you know, how, you know, the money stuff, it's about the mindset, you know, how do you change that? It's, I think it always, you know, so it's social. I mean, gaming is all social, but it's not like so, right? Because social media becomes so powerful. So which means if everybody on TikTok, uh, maybe some voice will say, oh, if you get TikTok is a Chinese company, then Chinese government might, they might use TikTok to kind of control the mindset of the whole, the, the whole world. So do you think that's true? You're, you're, you're in China, do you think that's true? Do you think TikTok is the kind of vehicle that you can use to control people's mindsets? What to me? No, but I mean, I don't really worry about the political side at all, but the, yeah. my worry about TikTok is, uh, you know, the, the culture, you know, the kind of promote is like, you know, I don't really want my, my kids uh, to be on TikTok every day. And because, you know, always they are promoting KOL, like, you know, the, the, yeah, the influences. Yeah. That's something I don't like because I think for the kids, it's too young. And you know, mm. it's too hard for them to, to see this type of uh, videos. But that's my worry. But I never worry, you know, oh, they can control my kids mindset in the future. No, that's not. But the, don't you think, don't you think this is more because, you know, the American internet companies maybe were, are a little bit pissed off that there's a foreigner coming in and taking some of their territory, right? They've been, usually they've been very dominant and they've wanted to go out and, you know, had take over other people's territories. This is the first time that a foreign company has come in and taken people away from Snapchat or Snap, away from Facebook, away from Twitter, away from, right, Vine when it existed or whatever. So do you think this is the thing that really scares them is that there's a, there's a viable yeah. competitor? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's why, I think that's why TikTok kind of, uh, you know, drive, drive such a storm, you know, to everyone because it's very popular. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, to do with the young, young generation in a global scale. And it's also to do with the mindset at the social media. I think, I think this is uh, not, you know, at the intention of Baidu, they didn't match that before. Even they are also big. Yeah. And, you know, right, you know, which has a uh, huge, but it's also only huge in China or only huge in the Chinese societies in the world. It's, so, it's not so, really so how much, I don't know if you can answer this question, but the data, the, you know, in, we, we all, we're all a bit nervous because we have seen how Facebook's data, the social media data, has been used and abused by uh, politics, uh, Cambridge Analytica, whatever. There's plenty of stories out there of how yeah. social media data has been used and abused uh, on, on US-born uh, platforms. Is there much, uh, have you seen or heard of any examples of where data has been used and abused on TikTok? Because I, I, none, I haven't seen any, any examples of kind of, you know, scheming, scheming, you know, Russians going into TikTok and abusing it. I don't know, is, is there any evidence? I mean, I, I have, is that come up at all in the internet in China of, of uh, you know, the abuse? I haven't seen any of this at all. No, no, I haven't seen that. The only, the only see is a complaint about data part is, you know, um, for the, some people complain with your data because you see some other advertisement. Yeah. Right. So using data to kind of to push uh, some advertisement and you know to the users. I think that that's the only company I see. Um, but and I then think there's that's... no. Do you know? Do you know where the data is going? If it's a separate company, Jiang Yiming claims it's a separate company. All the data is in the U.S. It's all hosted in the U.S. Do you know anything about this? Of where this data is really going? And is it? Hey, the first question I'd ask is that data valuable? Does anybody really care how often you watch? A guy putting on makeup or a girl dancing. I mean, is that is that valuable data? And how is that? Where is it being stored? Do you know? Well, uh, that's I don't know. But actually, that yeah. was uh, I don't know answer. But actually, that's the also that's a point I was surprised when, when I read. You know, Zhang Yimin decided to move the headquarter or TikTok outside China, and you know, I was actually I was a bit of surprise. Is uh, I think if that's really happened, the you know, headquarter outside, China, which means the data will be outside China as well. Uh, I think that's the first time I see the Chinese company doing that. Yeah, uh, but, but that, to be honest with you, that's not that norm, not, not that strange. Because in, in the internet business, anywhere now, a lot of companies, Japan, Australia, what a lot of companies now, a lot of countries are saying, if you're going to provide service to our people, you have to store their private data, you know, in, in that country, right? That's not yeah. shocking, right? 
Oh, because um, I mean, my shocking point is the headquarter. Also, oh, I see. Now I understand the headquarters. That's slightly different to the data. Yes. So, so what's happening then? Uh, are people? Is Jiang mean the founder? Is he is he held up as a hero fighting the American aggressor, or is he is he being seen as you know? Oh, he's giving in to the Americans. How is how is Chinese social media and the kind of internet crowd in? Or is it too early? I I think right now probably it's too early. Um, okay. At the very beginning, I I don't think that's the you know probably not many people know TikTok anyway. But now yeah. we see more. Um, I don't know where where the social media Chinese media is going uh, in the next like one two weeks. I I don't know, but. But 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 to be honest, I think t- to me is right now not many people like China that really understand what's really happened, you know, behind these uh, situations. Uh, of course, is you know, if you ask like the the kind of the the, the Douyin or TikTok user in China, uh, if you tell the story, of course, I, I'm say like everybody love China. I mean, they are Chinese. Everybody going to complain about you know you know. Uh, American, uh, so let's let's talk about the investor crowd because I, I understand that uh, that ByteDance is actually invested by SoftBank uh, and Sequoia, so it's got some it's got a lot of big international investors, right? How is that how is that going to shake things up? I mean, you know, the the internet is a is a very these internet big internet companies t- are taking money from all over the world, right? And they're they're getting investors from the U.S. They're getting money from the U.S. They're getting money from Japan from China. How is this going to shake this up? Is this the beginning? Do you think this is the beginning, as I fear, of a real balkanization of the internet, where America is going to start copying, uh, you know, China, and having its own internet? I mean, we see that recently there was this five. Uh, what are they calling it? Five cleans, right? We've got to clean up. Mike Pompeo says we've got five cleans. It sounds like something that you'd hear in, in you know, coming from the Gongtang Dang in China, right? You'd hear right. This next five years, we're doing five cleans. So, do you see that this is going to be the first move towards there being a very, very Chinese internet and a very, very American internet? Oh, it's a it's a hard question. I well, I don't know, but but you know what, what I can say is probably it's already happening. It's not just because of TikTok. I think it's already happening. But it's it's for example, if we talk about like investment. Uh, if like five years ago, I think the most of the Chinese, Chinese internet company startups they want to they, they want to raise U.S. dollar money. Yeah, they want to list on Nasdaq, right? They don't want to list but, in in Shenzhen. But right now, right now I think Nasdaq as people they want to raise USD dollars. They want to raise RMB, and mm. you know basically talk to the either Chinese investor or or maybe American investor but have the Chinese fund. Okay. Because it's hustle, um, right? So I think it's already happened if we talk only on the investment part. Uh, but I think in future after this, well, I don't know. My feeling is like, is I, I don't think, I don't think it, because still the loads of opportunity in China and, um, you know, in the tech space. Um, I think the, if you look at the, how Chinese tech and uh, industry, uh, you know, was uh, growing, or has been going in the past, you know, three years, is tremendous. Is uh, mm. loads of uh, you know, because now I think it's you know, five G and the many others. AI is like you get the government uh, or the whole government or the whole society is really focused on technology itself. Uh, I think that's create a lot of a lot of more opportunity in the future. So I, I think if we consider this. I, I don't think it's a, it's a wise decision if, you know, like a Sequoia, the foreign investors, they stop investing in China. Um, I, I, I don't I think that's that, going to happen. I don't think that's going to yeah. happen. But the, it was more the question of just the kind of interconnectivity of it all. I mean, I think, do you think, I mean, like Huawei, what Huawei has done, Huawei has done a great job of doing is they, they forget about North America. They go, there's the rest of the world, there's Africa, there's Europe, there's, do you see, I mean, unfortunately, ByteDance, TikTok was also kicked out of India, which apparently was its biggest market. So uh, typically, if North America gets all you know, uppity about it, Chinese companies seem to do a good job of going to other parts of the world, like Latin America or Europe or Africa. Yeah. 
yeah, I think, you I see think it, is, is TikTok getting the same kind of traction in other markets? Yeah, of course. I think the TikTok, I think, of course, TikTok these days is not good news for the Chinese internet going global. Yeah. But that also push the Chinese tech companies to think where else they should go. Uh, for example, like Southeast Asia, right? Yeah. Uh, India is a complicated market. Um, but, but just back to a point, I think maybe her, you know, the if US really ban TikTok, I think that hurts TikTok more than the ban from India. Why? Because I, I think India is really good for user base, is a huge, yes. you know, the base, but not really good for money at this stage. But US okay. market is really international. So that I think you that mean more from a revenue advertising perspective than yeah. the actual. Yeah. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, but, but of course, is you know, if you look at the, like, even like Huawei, I think all these tech companies, I think they spend more effort or resources on Asia, of course, Southeast Asia, and and also Europe as well. I, I think is I think it is that's kind of trend, because I think is you know where or not the TikTok ban happened. Because I, I don't I think here in China everybody I think most people we think you know the China US the sitting between China US going to last maybe next you know maybe one year or two years that's that that will stop you know I was going to end with COVID if they both end at the same yeah. time then we're all happy again so I'm going to take some questions because we kind of we got 15 minutes left to so some of some that have come in here on the chat so maybe I'll just take them from the from the chat first because there's some pretty good ones. I'm in no order. Um, there's one which is here. Yeah, what is the reaction to in China to the Microsoft offer? Do you think, I mean, I'd like to expand on that question because actually one I wanted to ask is, is Microsoft getting a bad reputation? Wait around, you know, it's been in China for a long time, well established. Is this going to harm uh, Microsoft's reputation in China? Are you starting to see people say negative things about Microsoft or has that not really taken effect? Um, to me, I don't. I don't think the. At least I don't. To me, I don't think that going to bring that much of a negative, and to Microsoft, I didn't. I didn't on the Chinese social media. I think I didn't read that much at all as, as well. But I think the only thing we talk about, you know, to do with the Microsoft is, uh, you know, we don't really figure out is Microsoft going to acquire TikTok because it's one is to be, one is to see. It's two different service model. So, you know, that makes people a bit confused. Um, yeah, but don't forget that Microsoft's been part, they bought LinkedIn, right? And they bought, they're trying to kind of get into that game, right? Um, so that, that's an interesting one. Then, then there's, um, there's an interesting one here from uh, Mike, Mike Savage. Are you there? Do you want to ask it yourself, Mike? Are you there or should I ask it on your behalf? Uh, I'm here. Why don't you ask it? It's a good question. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I just wondered, I don't know too much about Bydance, um, but it really seemed to me recently they'd been putting more and more resources behind um, Doyan or, and TikTok. And uh, if TikTok does get sort of uh, forced to be sold, it strikes me that it really puts them on a back foot. Um, so what happens to them? Do they, do they st now focus on China? I mean, any, any ideas? I mean, and, and looking at what they do, they seem far less diversified than the um, much older BAT companies that really have fingers across so many different areas. Um, and they're younger, but they just seem much more focused on a few, but very successful products. So is that a weakness for them as well? So but basically what should they do as assuming that they lose this uh, a hugely valuable international asset? Yeah, I think of course they're going to, I think it's bad news for TikTok. Uh, for or for bad bad ones. I think I think that's a huge and uh, negative impact on Python's is a uh, global uh, expressions. Um, but but I I would say first of all I think you know uh, doing the Chinese part is is uh, so so popular in China. So I think that's good news. They, they probably they're going to spend more effort on in, in China inside China as well. And um, but on the on talking about like, international. I, I don't think they're going to stop because, uh, as I said, uh, you know, um, you know, musically is not is not only a service acquired by TikTok, or acquired by by dance, and uh, you know they have still have the news what they call new news news public, or maybe several others uh, as well. So I don't know, 
and I think they still have uh, going to have uh, international um, service uh, um, for Python uh, for a while. Um, and also the third point is um, probably they didn't do that much uh, in the global market, but in China, and you know, Python is only it means uh, Douyin, and like it only means short video platform. Actually, Python owns like a news aggregator. They also has um, um, have the one app for. Then they, they have China. education apps. They have lots of things like that. There is one they one other question. There's one snack. question here from from Bobak that's going to shake you up. Uh, and maybe I'll let Bobak ask this question. Go on, Bobak, you there? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. How's yeah. it going, Napoleon? Um, so uh, uh, my question is very simple, uh, Gong, and thanks so much for the presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, and it's written here in the chat. When the US demands data from Apple, they are not obligated to cooperate. And in fact, we've seen uh, many, many very well publicized, very contentious instances where Apple has not cooperated. If the, US, if the Chinese government demands data from ByteDance or TikTok, are they obligated to cooperate? And I, I wrote, you know, followed up there and I said, I strongly suspect the answer to this question gets us to the heart of this issue. I think you already know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like you to say it because most people don't know the answer. And unfortunately, much of the press and conversation on this issue does not touch on this question. I don't know why, but they don't. So I'd love for you to articulate it. Yeah, I think I, I, I would say, um, yeah, I think that's the, the, the question I point out is uh, probably the, the key questions. Because um, I think we all know, probably know the answers. Uh, but I, you know, because to me, is more on the political side. I, I mean, this question, um, of course, it's the data sensitive. But I think to me, is I just want to really point out is, is, um, is also, if, if, if only to do data, right? E-commerce had the data, Alibaba also had the data. But why data for TikTok is so sensitive? Because the data is really touch on the, the mindset of young generation. It's, it's, it's social media data. It's not like you know selling figures or buying figures. So why is uh, why you know it's become so critical right now? It's, but it's a slightly unfair question, Bob, but, because because Apple won't cooperate, but you're sure as hell that Google and Facebook will cooperate. I mean, uh, that's what all these well, scandals have been about, right? I mean, yeah. uh, so, yeah. you, you know, I mean, uh, Facebook has been you know handing out data data like like you know soup on a street corner you just yeah, have to I pay think, for it i think this is um, to me is a really hard answer and uh, and you know said you know we i think we are we are so tiny uh, you know personnel uh, in, in you know in, in the market we, we don't know I, I i really don't know you know it's happening in china can you see it's never happened outside china i, I don't know it's because to me i never I, I try to find out to confirm anything. Okay. Do we have any any other questions whilst people are there? We've got we've got nine minutes or so left. Is there anybody out there who wants to ask a question? You can throw it in chat, and I'll uh, uh, throw it out if it's not too political. Um, let me see. Oh, we've got Wei Chi saying there is a backlash. Maybe you could expand on that a bit, Weichi. Could you could you maybe turn that into a bit of a question if you're there? Hello, are you there? Oh, I just can't see. Okay, so there's starting to be a backlash. It, it is early days. Um, where do you where do you think like you know if if I mean the the internet when you and I first got involved, it was a global thing. Do you think this is the signs of the internet kind of staying you know in its language in its territory? You know, you've been at this for a while. Is this gonna is this gonna mean that you know it's just gonna stick? I mean, China's a big market, like you rightly pointed out, as is the US. You know, uh, do you think this is just gonna basically force uh, internet innovators? There's a question here about it. But how is this trickling down into the kind of startup community? I, I guess you know, when you're a startup out of China, you always thought, oh, I can go global. I can be like the big guys, and I can go global, right? Now, are the startup community thinking, 
oh damn, if I start, you know, in Shenzhen or Chengdu or whatever, I'm, my business is going to be limited to China. It's going to be really hard for me to break out of China unless I'm selling, you know, non-sensitive yeah. software. Yeah, I, th I think this, that's a great point. I think it's, um, no, I think it's, it's, I think it's a really sad news and for that because if you look at, you know, what happened now, it's nothing to do with the, you know, basically the nature rule of the business. Yeah. Right, because you know, is 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 by is run by the political guys, and you know, for long tech or long business reason. And so that, I think this is sad. And I think it's. I think we worry is, you know, we didn't see this happen before. We never expect them, but then I'll say, oh, that might happen. You know, it's it's so it's so bad. But but, but again, I I don't think, I think still. I'm kind of positive on this. As I said, uh, if, you know, if you are doing startup in China or outside China, always, I think global globalizations or we, we the another word called globalization, the global possible code. I think that's a different the trend. Um, you have to do that. Um, but, but of course, it's, I think that the gap- Wait, 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 wait. Uh, what, what do you mean by global? I don't understand what that is. It's, it's a bit, it sounds like kind of word that you make up when you've had too many PGO. What What is global? <laughs> What is global and why does that matter? I mean, think about the startups, right? You, you, you have, right? We have a glo globalization, right? Yeah. People going global. We also have localizations. Yeah. Right. You have to localize. So the globalization is some word. That's the kind of word where you know. Actually, I'm not the one created, but I learned from yeah. others. So basically, said if for a China company, you have to think about glo you know, um, globals. So basically, you have to think about you know, Southeast Asia and to, to international expansions. But for China founders or China companies, once you enter the local market, yeah. you have to think is how to localize your yeah. product into the local okay. market. You know, so you could say TikTok's been a great success. TikTok's a fantastic yes. example of localizing, right? Yes. Totally localized. Yes. WeChat, yeah. and WeChat is a failure at localizing. WeChat goes into, uh, into other markets and it, it remains extremely Chinese. It's like walking yeah. into a dim sum restaurant in London. Yeah. It's, it's, because, it's, right? Because, because I think before we talk about the localization, it's only, we only you know, refer to the product. Okay, how to localize product. But, but now yeah. we have, um, it's to do with the team. You have to have the local teams, the local yes. leaders. Yeah. You have to understand culture, all this stuff. But still, I think there's a chance, you know, China, you, you know, South Asia, you know, Africa, there's still some, so many emerging markets you have to, you can think about as well. But, but, but of course, it's, you know, back to you, I think question is, it's already happened, it's, you know, before we all the follow for China side, we all the follow Silicon Valley. But now I think, I remember like five years ago when Chinese startups uh, to pitch, you know, VCs, they always tell you, oh, what I'm doing, we were doing, we are doing the China, Chinese Facebook, Chinese, you know, Twitters. But if you look at what happened in the past, you know, two or three years, we don't care about Silicon Valley you know, uh, anymore in the startup ecosystems. You know, the Pinduoduo or, or Meituan or Elema, all these Chinese unicorns, it didn't, you, you don't, you know, you, you don't find any kind of reference or, or benchmark anymore. And so yeah, I, I think it's interesting it's, because uh, I, I'm being corrected by Bob Ike. It's always good to have more intelligent people on these calls um, saying that actually TikTok was not a localization. It was, as you pointed out earlier, it was uh, musically, but you said musically was Chinese. So I'm a bit confused because, uh, you know, Bob Ike saying that basically ByteDance bought an American company, right? Now, I, I guess in, in some ways, what you're saying is that what could happen the same way that Facebook has bought companies in other markets, you could say that Chinese companies will get rich in China and then go and buy companies overseas is what Alibaba is doing in Southeast Asia, right? The expansion is not, you don't localize by taking a service from one country into another, you just basically go and acquire an, another one. I'm more curious about the startup community. Is this gonna affect, because you deal with that a lot, you know, your events and stuff. Do you think this kind of, balkanization of the internet is going to affect the energy and the drive and more importantly the funding that happens in China behind the kind of startup community. You know, you go into any big Chinese city, there'll be accelerators, investors, kind of startups. You know, do you see this changing at all? 
the change caused by like yeah ca caused by chinese companies being told sorry uh -uh, you can't come into our market uh -uh. if you want to come into our market you play by our rules is this gonna is this gonna affect things or you think people will just take it in their stride and adapt i think for now i think i haven't seen that yet but because we're still wondering what's going to happen in the end and to to TikTok. but i i guess we'll probably you know we'll see you know after 15 september um so probably we can have more sauce but now i, I don't think that's uh um, you know I, I don't think you know we have that type of worry uh, at this stage at this stage yeah i mean that's kind of what i like about the entrepreneurial gang is they basically completely ignore all the media and just go ahead with it and do it so that that's uh, that's interesting do we have one more question we have time for one more question if there is one i'll ask it or i can Whoever wants to ask it, uh, can ask it. Um, there's some questions that are difficult for you to answer, so I don't really want to. I'll ask it about your company. Your company is Technode, right? Last question. Technode is what? Are you just a Chinese company? Are you, do you see yourself as a global company? Do you see yourself as, what is your company? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably the Always good to end with a good question. One of Chinese companies, um, but we also want to want to global, uh, so that's why we set our office in Singapore, and we want to cover more Southeast Asia and uh, startups. So your headquarters is Singapore? No, no, no. Headquarters is in Shanghai. Okay. But we have office in base uh, in Singapore to cover Southeast Asia. But you see yourself covering Chinese internet companies going overseas. Is that your focus? Is it the Chinese? I think that's the focus we have in past probably 10, well, if it's, you know, counting from my blogging is in you know, the past 10 years, but actually starting from last year, uh, we like we move forward and we want to cover more Southeast Asia. So basically we will also want to help you know, to build a bridge between Chinese, you know, Chinese uh, startup ecosystem with the, uh, you know, the Asian startup ecosystems. Uh, because we see more and more kind of uh, connection between China and South Asia for now. You know, the Chinese investor going to South Asia and the South East Asia, like a big corporate, they, they came to China uh, to do the investment. So that's what, what we want to do. But that's, that's why and we want to cover more uh, Southeast Asia startup scenes because that's the Chinese company's uh, next move uh, as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I also find it interesting because I think, you know, like all these things that are currently coming out of America, they're shooting themselves in the foot because a lot of the startups in Southeast Asia will choose, will they take their business to China or will they take it after they expand out of Southeast Asia, will they take it to North America? It looks like they're now going to say, well, oh, North America, a bit, bit sensitive. It looks like China is going to benefit from more and more technology entrepreneurs saying, if you keep your doors open, we would like to see if we could expand our business into China. Now, of course, that assumes a lot of things have to be in place, like IP protection. Yeah. And that, but do you see yeah, that bridge think, happening as well? Oh, yeah. I, I think it's, I can tell you one, one kind of interesting story is, you know, I, I traveled a lot like last year to South Asia. I think I, I really see is is more like you know five years ago in China, mm. or even like years ago in China is, you know I, I mentioned the five years ago Chinese always pitch you as a you know Chinese Facebook stuff, but when now you go to South Asia, they're gonna tell you oh what I'm doing is like you know uh, the Chinese Lacan, uh, okay. or, or Chinese uh, Bidance, or Chinese stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if Lacan Lacan is a good reference, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there is, but there are some companies doing that, but. But anyway, um, but you really see that. So that's why I think the the, the China and South Asia, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's I, I think there are lots of uh, potentials uh, there and, you know, considering the market. Okay, well, it's been very good chatting to you and thanks for everybody participating. One thing, if people want to find you, where do they find you? Are you, I'm a bit confused. Are you Dr. Lu Gang or are you Gang Lu? If somebody wants to find you, how can they find you? Maybe you could put your, uh, we can put your LinkedIn uh, onto the message board or something. Where's the best place to find you? Techno.com? Well, Techno.com, well, techno because, you know, you, to read the Chinese news, uh, you go Techno.com. To, to read the South East Asia news, go to Techno.global. 
And to find me, always search for Gang Lu. And like my Twitter handle is Gang Lu. My LinkedIn, if you search Gang Lu, Gang Space Lu, and you can find my LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm putting it here. So it's techno.global is your, see, you even have global aspirations. Techno Global is your Southeast Asia, and then Gang Lu will find you. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a very evolving story. I know it's very hard to predict it, but I can see that we're either going to go technology world war or we're going to go kind of some kind of happy middle way but with data be balkanized yeah. let's let's see where this goes it's it's a tough thing to predict but thanks a lot yeah bye 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 guys thanks a lot